talk about uh, if you get slow wag. Uh, I'm meaning slow, dun, dun, not fast, hard at stops, but uh, continuously slow things. And the first of all, if we look at the mechanical aspects, it's very, very important to understand that a little slop in the control system isn't that bad compared to any binding. There's even tiniest little notch, meaning um, the tail servo will push, push, and then to get over the notch, and then it jumps over. And it's the same thing as having too high. Remember what I talked about when we had a too high eye gain where it jumps over the set point to the other and then it forth and back, forth and back. It's the same thing when you have binding. And uh, it's really not good. So make sure your tail is smooth. One of the important things that many do mistakes and that's what I'm pointing out. When you have thrust bearings in the tail uh, it's very important that they are sitting in the correct order and that's the bigger one on the inside, the smaller one on the outside. Uh, they have different inner diameters and uh, if you get that wrong on just one uh, blade holder you will get um, that slow continuous wag because it's binding as you put load on the blades. It won't show up on the bench but uh, as soon as you put load on the blades it will. So, uh, in the aspect of the V-bar, uh, we have, of course, too low gain. Too low gain and it will be soft tail and you get this slow continuously wag. wag. What we can do also is to tweak the sensor dead band. I run it at zero actually now on my uh, logos. Uh, I believe that they, it will change or they will remove it in future version. It should be zero when you are in flight. Uh, it's how fast the gyro will react, the dead band before it reacts. Uh, the lower the number, the faster it reacts. So, sensor dead band zero and make sure you have high enough gain. How is high enough gain? Well, it's as high as you can run it without getting wa wag. And then we're talking the fast wag, the hard, when you do stops, when you do funnels, stuff like that, forced forward flight and fly sideways or stuff like that so uh, as high as possible and uh, that's the baseline if you get that high uh, oscillation or wag when you do stops it's either you have two most commonly is too high uh, gain it, and it's the p part of the gain usually uh, which causes that fast fast wag uh, but it also could be that you're hitting that uh, level where you stole a blade just the last part and you can just try reducing the limit on, on uh, in the V-bar if, if you think that might be the case. Uh, also what it could be is slow tail servo. Uh, if you have a tail servo that is not up to par for your application that's usually how it shows because it, it simply don't react fast enough and you get that fast uh, tail wag. So to put everything together um, up until now you might feel that oh this is not that bad uh, well to uh, ruin your world there is no simple thing uh, when it comes to tail Hence all the problems that people get. Uh, because if you think, oh, I need a firmer tail, I want absolute control when I push the, push the collective. So I want high eye gain again so it can adjust fast. And then you run into the problem getting uh, inconsistent period rate. Okay, I'll have to lower my, my eye gain, but then I raise the P gain and uh, that will give me firmer control. Yes, uh, up until a certain point where your mechanical servo or otherwise you get tail wag, then you have to lower the P. And there is always this balance between things. So there is no um, right or wrong when it comes to... I cannot say what your helicopter, the optimal values for your helicopter is. I can say you say that 
um, the presets in the program are often have, having the correct relationship between P and I, meaning the common gain would uh, lower both and or uh, or raise both, and it should be a fairly good match. One important factor is uh, if your helicopter mechanicals are up for it. Um, if you take something like a T-Rex 700, which I had a few of, uh, it, it it's the tail by default has low uh, speed, so uh, you don't have that good authority on the tail. So if you put on, if you compare the blades of a regular 105 and the Align blade, which come with it, and uh, here is another one. Uh, the different blade size, core length, uh, stiffness, everything matters, and when it comes to 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 down to to the tail authority, it might help to get a different type of blade. A uh, thinner cord length uh, blade will have uh, less bite, and therefore it can be that you get uh, less tail authority. Of course, longer blades makes it better. The, the one I showed here, uh, the torsons are 106. That extra millimeters give that little edge, and it's stiff, and, and um, so it can make the difference. All of a sudden, you can run that low I gain, higher P gain, and get a good tail. Uh, if you find yourself uh, trying uh, too hard, I always use actually bank switching in the V-bar and then I have one bank with my uh, good known settings and I try um, new settings on a uh, different bank because one thing that is uh, the brain is good is is adapting it's very hard to to uh, know what's best if you don't switch forth and back uh, you adapt very fast to, to changes uh, when it comes to the pre-comp, uh, we can generally say the lower I gain we have, uh, again, the lower I gain, the less uh, we allow it to move upon changes or errors. Uh, the lower I gain, the higher pre-comp we actually need, because we need to help it even more um, when it comes to sudden changes. Uh, I'm gonna point out this. Uh, I said before, uh, sensor dead band zero. Uh, it's only if you have a good servo. It will cause uh, extra buzz on the servo. So there might be servos out there that don't like it at all. Uh, if you have um, buzz already on it uh, with dead band three. So um, if it sounds bad on the bench or or um, getting hot, you shouldn't run lower. But for BLS servos, uh, zero is perfect. So that's about it. Um, it 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 is kind of fiddling and hard to get it right. But once you get it fairly good, uh, it, it's worth it. Um, one thing to point out, um, on a regular size helicopter with regular, I mean T-Rex uh, 500 and upwards, uh, do not surpass 70 on the eye gain. Uh, on, you can try higher, but there, there is a risk that you get a, what I call super wag when it's going uh, actually 45 degrees like this. Doom, doom, doom. And uh, it's very scary in flight, uh, but it's very easy to stop. It's just if you move the rudder, it will stop. But it's that bounce. You have a set point in the middle, and it bounce very long around that set point because it's going to the max every time. Uh, it ha has happened to me when I tweak. But uh, I, if you keep the eigen under 70, you wouldn't uh, have that issue. You can on smaller machines like T-Rex 250 or or something like it. You can get it with a much lower eigen, but um, that should cover it.